Sergeant Lara, Santa Maria Police Department. Today's date is 123 of 2017. The time is 16, 13 hours. Are you getting that? Yes, sir. Okay, good. I want to stamp too, okay? Okay. Ma'am, do you happen to have your ID on you? She don't have to ID herself. She absolutely does. No, she don't. She's a passenger. And she's not. Wearing you pulled a me over. And she's not wearing a seatbelt, so she is required to identify herself by law. Here we go. We're not going to play this game back yep. and forth. Okay? Well, there will be a lawsuit and a complaint. What's your name and badge number? Okay, we're not going to go back and forth. What's your name and badge number? I've already identified myself as Officer White with the Asheville City Police. Okay, what's your badge number? It's P9. That's irrelevant to the situation. No, it ain't. Hey, folks. Welcome back to our channel, where we dive into the stuff that really hits home. Today, we've got a story that will get you thinking about your rights, what cops should do, and how all of this unfolds right where we live and breathe. Picture this, you're strolling down the public sidewalk, minding your own business, feeling like you're in the right place. Then out of the blue, you're caught up in a tense standoff with the police, being told you're trespassing. It's not just a squabble, it's a clear example of how we got to balance our freedoms with keeping our society in line. If you believe in defending civil rights, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing to our channel and sharing it with your friends and family. Your support can really make a difference in spreading awareness and don't forget to head over to his channel to appreciate him for standing up for our rights. Links in the description. How are you doing? Good, I'm Officer White, Asheville City Police Department. Reason for the stop today was you used your turn signal twice. All right, you didn't use it on Elm Street turning on West 48th Street. You also didn't use it prior to making your turn. I used it back there. I yep. used it back there. I put it on back there, but I think it's Okay. A little well, janky. You know that that's the reason for the stuff. That's fine. Okay, do you have your driver's license and proof of insurance, please? Uh, I don't have my insurance on me. No? Okay. No. Do you happen to have any weapons in the vehicle today? Nope. Okay. And then... It used to have a CCW, so that's what I'm asking. Yeah, but the new law says that even if I do, I don't have to tell you. If I ask you, you do. No. That's not the new law. It absolutely is. No, it's not. If, if I ask you, you have to answer truthfully. That is the law. Well, actually, it isn't. Okay. The new law says I don't have to disclose okay. anything, but I don't have none. On me, no. Okay, do you happen to have your proof of insurance on you? I just said I don't have it with me. You don't have it with you? I okay. just got this vehicle. Okay, do you have insurance on the vehicle? Yes. Okay, what provider do you have for insurance? It is, what is the name of that place? Shit. It's a weird name. It's where you can pay daily okay. or weekly or... Okay. Yeah. It's a weird name. So you don't know who your insurance provider is? I forget the name of okay. it. Okay, ma'am, do you happen to have your ID on you? She don't have to ID herself. She absolutely does. No, she don't. She's a passenger. And she's not wearing. You pulled a seat, me over. And she's not wearing a seatbelt, so she is required to identify herself by law. Here we go. We're not going to play this game back yep. and forth. Okay? Well, there will be a lawsuit and a complaint. What's your name and badge number? Okay, we're not going to go back and forth. What's your name and badge number? I've already identified myself as Officer White with the Asheville City Police. Okay, what's your badge number? It's P9. That's irrelevant to the situation. No, it ain't. You have to answer that question. Okay. It's, right. it's in your policy. You guys just sit tight up right back with you. It's in your policy. Well, you ain't got to tell them about it. I'm going to do a, a complaint for your request and everything. And a lawsuit. Yeah, there you go, there. That's one waterfall. You go right over the hill right there. You know, by Perry Park News in that area. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah, we were just down there. There was one lady, and her t her camp is gone. Are well, they playing? Them, so it's been, there was yeah. a shitload of people down there before. Yeah. You ready, Beck? All right. You still living on Jefferson Avenue? Yep. I'm going to do a four year on you, complaint, and everything else. I'm going to know everything about you. If I was in my Mercedes, you wouldn't even fuck with me. What's your phone number? Well, I ain't well, giving it. Well, okay. yeah. I know I had my blinkers on, so and I got proof of it too. And I got a witness. You just run my. You're gonna be issued a citation today. Is gonna be for uh, improper turn signal. Okay, you could actually be issued two citations for both offenses. I'm only gonna give you the one citation today. Uh, you're going to have an option your court date. The option your court date is going to be November 22nd, 2023 at 8.30 a.m. in Asheville Municipal Court. All right. Um, personal appearance is not required. How are hey, you guys. I, I know it all. I, I, gotta explain. I, I, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I don't, sure don't, 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 don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. So anyway, so you have an option oh, to appear. Oh, God. Okay? Uh, if you choose I don't want to hear it. You don't have to explain it. I know it. You don't have Whatever. to. I'm you telling you. Sign the ticket. I don't even have to sign it either. There you go. If you don't sign it, you're going to be under arrest. Really? That's a fake-ass law. Look it up. 
Yeah, her ID. You're gonna get it back when I'm done with you. Oh, is she? Why are you being rude to me? I haven't done. I told you, he's a dickhead. I'm, I'm, I'm being formal. No, you're not. So I'm supposed to. Okay. I didn't I was, call you out of your name. I know. Didn't say anything like improper to you. Rude, at no point. Rude. There you go. At, at no point. You think I'm the only one being rude here? Okay. Well, I can be rude. I can say whatever I want to, and you can't do shit about it. Yeah, to an extent. No, I can say anything I want. First Amendment. Right yeah, try to try to fuck with my First Amendment. I dare you. I can call you an ass. I can do whatever I want. Say what I want. And you can't say interference or any of that type of shit because that's a physical act. I just want my, my license. <clears throat> He's probably going to write you a ticket too because it's a douche. When you took your seatbelt off after we stopped. What V8 did they put in these? 305s? You know, it's, uh, it's a LS, three, like Five a 350. Seven. Yeah. Five seven, yeah, this is actually has the LS motor in it. Like a lot of 5.3s, people think, oh, it's LS. That's a 305. Well, my generation was a 305. Right. Well, our generation. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm a little older than you. How old are you? 55. You're not that much older. I'm, no. I'm, I'm going to be 50 no. in May, so. Yeah, I'm a Ford man myself, me. but. You're what? I'm a Ford man and German, but but I, only Mercedes. I hate to say, I, I love my Dodges. I loved them back in the muscle day cars, and I still. Well, I like yeah. some old old I Dodges. Still yeah. with them. My uncle's got some cool and of course, ones. Here's your ID back. All right, I'm gonna give you a verbal, a verbal warning today for not wearing your seatbelt. You gotta make sure you have your seatbelt on. Okay? Which I have it on video. She took it off when we stopped. Whatever. So, do you guys have Don't any questions, me. comments, or concerns? No. 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 Good, I'm gonna know everything about you. And you're gonna have a complaint we'll on your do record. Your research, then. I'm not. I'm not gonna sit here and have this debate on. The I don't care what you want to do, you but you can't say I can't say ahead. nothing to you. So get your take. You guys are free to go. You're dismissed. I'll leave when you leave. All right, you'll be safe. All right. You too, man. You, you guys have a great day. You kiss ass. Hit bricks. You midget. The situation emphasizes how crucial it is to know your rights when dealing with the police. You should be aware that you can refuse to show identification if you haven't committed a crime or aren't suspected of one. Although officers can ask for ID in specific situations, understanding your rights and asserting them is important. In the United States, the Fourth Amendment protects people from unreasonable searches and seizures. So for an officer to ask for your ID, they must have a good reason to suspect you of a crime. If you're not a suspect, you're not legally obliged to show your ID. While it's good to cooperate with the police, it's just as important to safeguard yourself from unnecessary intrusion. You can choose to remain silent, especially if you think your rights might be at risk. If an officer questions you, you can use your Fifth Amendment right to stay silent and avoid saying anything that might get you in trouble. It might feel intimidating to stand up for your rights, especially against a police officer or authority figure. But remember, your rights are there to protect you. By asserting them, you not only defend yourself but also make sure that law enforcement is responsible for their actions. If you ever think your rights are being violated, try to stay calm and assertive. Keep in mind that you can say no to showing ID, stay silent, and ask for a search warrant if needed. To sum it up, this incident is a strong reminder of why it's important to know your rights and stand up for them when necessary. As citizens, we have the right to shield ourselves from unfair searches and seizures, and it's crucial to assert these rights when needed. Always remember your rights are meant to protect you, and it's your responsibility to stand up for them. By doing so, you not only protect yourself, but also ensure that law enforcement is accountable for their actions. All right there, we got a shot of Old Glory. And below Old Glory is the California State Bear flag. Always flying high and proud. This looks like some kind of a entrance for prisoner transport vehicles. Yeah. We got the Santa Maria Police Department on the scene. Hi, how you doing? Good, how are you? Great, thank you. Uh, so Juvenile Hall wanted to know why you're videotaping their building. Just gathering content for a little story I'm working on. Okay. Is it for like school or something? 
Uh, just I have a blog and as such. Okay. Do you have ID on you? Uh, I prefer not to identify. Okay, I'd like to see it. You're required by law to give me your ID. Actually, unless I've been suspected of committing a crime, I'm you're not filming, required to. You're filming a government building. Yeah, uh, from okay. a public sidewalk. Right. That's which fine. is perfectly legal. Right. I have the right to detain you, okay? And I, you're required to identify yourself. Well, okay. you're not being charged with anything. I understand that. I understand that, officer, but I do understand California law. Unless you have reasonable suspicion that I've actually committed a crime. Filming a government building from a public sidewalk, which is protected by the First Amendment, is not a crime. No, but I have the right to detain you to figure out what's going on, okay? Okay. You're at your address in all BDUs. You've got a video camera, two video cameras, okay? Okay. The juvenile hall is concerned, okay? If no crime is committed, then no big deal, okay? But I do have the right to identify you. Uh, you are required to give me your ID. No, I'm not. Unless, I, unless you have reasonable suspicion that I've actually committed a crime, I'm not required to identify myself. Yes, sir. No, I'm not. Okay, officer, what am I being detained for? For suspicion of why you're at, dressed and acting all weird in front of you. Well, suspicion is not a crime. <laughs> right, it's not probable cause. It's reasonable suspicion to detain you to investigate what's going on. Okay, and I just told you what's going on. Well, officer, at this point, I'd like to speak to a supervisor, sure. so I would ask Absolutely. that you call a sergeant out here. Absolutely. Santa Maria Police Department. Today's date is 123 of 2017. The time is 16, 13 hours. Are you getting that? Yes, sir. Okay, good. I want a stamp too, okay? Okay. How can we help you? Uh, nothing. I just, uh, your officers made contact with me. I explained to them. I'm okay. gathering content for a little story I'm doing. All right. And uh, one of your officers, she wanted to uh, ident uh, see my ID. I told her I'd prefer not to. And Actually, she's... we do have the right to ask you for your ID because they call us here. It is a juvenile hall facility here, so okay. we do have your authority. So, okay, so if you're doing a story, yes, we do have that right, sir. Okay, and I explained to your officer that unless I understand California law, mm -hmm. I've been through this before. Okay. Unless you have reasonable suspicion that we I've, do actually, have reasonable suspicions so that I've actually committed a crime. Okay. No, no. Hear me out, okay? So, okay. Listen to her. so we have people that do reconnaissance on police, on our juvenile hall facilities, jail facilities, people that right. okay. gather information, take video surveillance, try to identify us, identify our vehicles, and do all that kind of stuff for malicious purposes, okay? And I'm not saying that's what you're doing. I don't know what you're doing out here. You're saying that you're doing this for a blog or whatever. So. We're detaining you to figure out whether or not you're doing this for malicious purposes or completely innocent purposes. And if it's for completely innocent purposes, that's totally fine. But we do have the right to identify you, okay? And if we ID you and everything's good to go, then you're fine. And I have a right to decline because I, uh, I know the law. I know my right. I'm not trying to be confrontational or anything. But unless you have reasonable suspicion that I've actually no. committed a crime, I'm not required yeah, so to, the officer here. to identify so myself. So the way a detention works, right, we don't have probable cause at this point. The reason we detain people is to investigate something to see whether or not a crime has been committed. So when we detain somebody, at that point, we do not know whether or not a crime has been committed or not yet. Okay, it's during the detention we do our investigation to identify that per person and find out why they're there doing what they're doing. And if no crime has been committed, there's no probable cause and that person is free to go. But during a detention, that's when we do our investigation. At that point, the person is required to identify themselves by law. No crime has been committed that I can tell at this point. You're right, that's correct. Okay. But we still have the right to detain you and to identify you, okay? Okay, but what probable cause is there to uh, suspect no, that I have committed a crime? Is, I'm filming from a public sidewalk. there was probable cause, you would be in handcuffs already. Right. That's what she's trying to explain to you. Okay. It's but we do have, exactly, a detention just to investigate. And we didn't come out here on our own. They contacted us. Yeah, you got a call for service. Okay. I understand so, that. And if you know the law and everything, you know that part too. Okay? And what on line is, the officer's right, and we do have a job to do, obviously. Taxpayers pay us to do a job, and this is part of the job. Okay. Okay? So, all she's asking for identification is what we're talking to. She's not asking for too much. Okay. Okay? And I'm respectfully declining. Okay. Well, we do need an ID, sir. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm not going to provide identification. I, like I said, I've been through this before. You know, uh, I've been through similar situations. Well, you know, this way we start our camera, too, so that way, I mean, everything's recorded. Okay, Okay. Sir? So, okay, what was the, uh, what was the call? Alright, this is what's going to happen. Okay, sir. Okay. 
we're going to stand around so you take care of your business, okay? And then whatever you need for your blog, do the film in here from here. And obviously that's private property over there. Okay. And then just then leave when you're ready, okay? But we're going to stand around here to make sure that the, the facility is safe. Okay, that's because perfectly fine. Because there are kids in here, and that's our main concern here, kids, mm -hmm. okay? So we don't know what you're doing here, and we don't feel comfortable just leaving you here. So we are going to stay stick around, and then uh, when you're ready to do, when you're done, then you can leave. Actually, I'm already ready. Well, then we can get yeah. going then, okay? Okay. And everything will be documented. We're writing a report and everything, all the okay. pictures and everything. So we have our own little information too, okay? Okay. All right, so whenever you're ready, you can get out of here or okay. whatever you're going to do. So I'm no longer being detained. I'm no, free to no, go. You can, you can, you're free to go. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, that's a bad angle. <laughs> oh, yeah, the glare. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to glare. Okay. And again, we're doing all this for the safety of the children in there. Okay. All righty. All right. All righty. Okay. So, um, okay. To you now. All right. Thank all you. Alrighty. Have a good day. As I mentioned earlier, there are times when auditors, cop watchers, and those who cover them become frustrated with repeating the same issues. One of these recurring problems is the lack of proper education and training for law enforcement officers about individual rights. Police academies need to give thorough training to officers, making sure they understand and respect the rights they promise to protect. Sadly, it seems this part of education hasn't been given enough attention. The problem is not just in the education system, but also in the mindset some officers develop over time. The us versus you mindset creates an unhealthy power dynamic and stops trust from growing between law enforcement and the public they work for. This mindset can lead to ignoring individual rights, making the issues faced by communities worse. Before talking more about the incident, it's important to understand the concepts of government property and public property. Government owned properties are lands or assets owned by federal, state or local governments. This can include government agencies or government supported organizations like libraries or parks. Some government owned properties may or may not let the public in freely. Some government owned properties are considered public goods like parks, libraries, roads, and sidewalks. These areas are open to the public and serve as important community spaces. Now let's talk about public easements, which are a specific type of property ownership. An easement is the right to use someone else's land for your benefit. Usually, one property benefits from the easement, while another property is burdened by it. Easements can be public or private, positive or negative. A public easement is a legally established right that lets the public access a specific area of someone's land for a specific purpose. When there's an easement on a piece of land, the owner must allow others to use it for the stated purpose. In the case of a public easement, the landowner must let the public access a designated area for the reasons in the easement. To be clear, government-owned property is usually considered public property unless it's specifically marked as an area with restricted access. Public easements are a way the public can access certain areas, even if they are on government-owned property. It's important to know and talk about this difference when dealing with issues about law enforcement's understanding of the law. Share your thoughts about the officer's actions in the comments, and don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more videos, and visit his channel to appreciate him for standing up for our rights. Find the links in the description.